Ayan, magandang araw sa inyong lahat at welcome again to our subject accounting information system and we are now to discuss chapter 9 which is all about database management system so after this chapter you would be able to number one understand the operational problems inherent in the plat file approach to data management that give rise to the database concept also, you will be able to understand the relationships among the defining elements of the database environment. You will be able also to understand the anomalies caused by unnormalized databases and the need for data normalization. And also, you will be familiar with the stages in database design, including entity identification, data modeling, constructing the physical database, and preparing user view. And finally, you will be able to be familiar with the operational features of distributed databases and recognize the issues that need to be considered in deciding on a particular database configuration. So I hope that you're all doing great today. And okay, I hope na may matutunan kayo as we move forward to our discussion about database management system. Okay, so let's start. So, in chapter 1, uh, we have already introduced to you some of the history about the information system. Okay, and one of the words that was being introduced there is all about flat file. Or, this is also known as tinatawag natin na legacy system. So, this particular environment of a flat file okay, is where the user owns their data file. Exclusive ownership of data is a natural consequence of two problems associated with the legacy system. Okay, so when we talk about the flat file, it's focusing more on a legacy system that the user owns the data. Okay, so in here, no, in, in uh, our database environment, okay, computer processing involves two components. One, the data, and also the instructions or the programs. Okay. Conceptually, there are two methods in designing the interface between the program instructions as well as our data. So we have yung file-oriented processing, which is a specific data file was created for each application. And also we have the data-oriented processing, which is being created on a single data repository to support numerous application. So typically, yung ating flat file or legacy system, which is eventually yung first in the history of the particular uh, information system approaches. Okay? So, nagkaroon ng problem. Okay? So, ano yung mga problems na yun? So, one would be with regards to business culture, which erects the barriers between organizational units that inhibit wide range of integration of data. And the second is that merong limitation yung plat file management technology natin. Okay? So, ang naging disadvantage ng file-oriented processing, okay, which is eventually yung sa plat file yun, okay, is that the data is redundant as well as the programs. And also, it varies the formats for stalling the redundant data. So, naging problematic yung plat file. So, although ginamit siya before, but eventually, no, nag-evolve siya to a database environment. So, mamaya natin pag-uusapan uh, pag yung more on the database management system. So, we have just introduced only about the plat file. Now, this is the example of the data management of uh, a particular plat file system. Okay? So, ano bang nangyayari dito sa... Uh, particular figure na to. So, as you can see, okay, um, the user, as mentioned to you a while ago, in a flat file system, was being owned by, the, the, the data, the data files were owned by each of the users. So, let's say you have user 1 here in this transaction, then it has a program, then pagmamayari niya yung data, which is A, B, and C. Okay? And also, now, another user. We have user number 2, which uses program number 2. Pag mamayari niya or accessible niya si data X, B, and Y. And also user 3, having the program 3, will have also the data L, B, and M. 
So as you can see here, no, each of this data that the values user has have this particular letter B na data. Okay? This just illustrates yung kadi-discuss lang natin kanina, na disadvantage ng flat file or file uh, oriented processing wherein there is a data redundancy. Okay? Okay, so de bakit data redundant? Paulit-ulit na may B dun sa data nila, which supposed to be kung saan na organized yung database management system natin, then we could be able to come up with a system that contains all of this data. Also, mapapansin ninyo that each of the users has their own program. What if? Diba? Pare-parehas lang naman yung program nila. Itig isa pa yung kanilang program. Diba? The program is also redundant. Okay? So, that's the disadvantage of the flat file system natin. Okay? So, another about the data redundancy and flat file problems. Okay? is about the data storage, no? Which creates excessive storage costs of paper documents o kaya naman magnetic form. So, eventually, bakit nagiging um, excessive yung storage? Kasi yung data kanina, nakita nyo, per user, they have their data storage. So, super dami ng data storage. Kung maraming user tayo, then most likely, it would cost a lot. Okay. Another is about data updating. So, any changes o kaya naman additions must be performed for multiple items. So, isipin nyo na lang dun sa illustration kanina, i-update mo si data about letter B. So, mangyari dun, no? each of the um, user's data file will be updated. So, tatlong beses doon i-update kung sana maayos yung system, isang update na lang para doon sa particular three users na yun. Okay? So, another problem is also about currency information. So, in terms of currency information, okay, so, whenever there is a multiple update, no, um, if hindi properly disseminated yung update, then there will be uh, failing to update all of the files. Okay? Especially yung, yung about sa currency, di ba? Okay? And lastly, would be about task data dependency, wherein the user is unable to obtain additional information as his or her needs change. Okay, bakit po hindi siya kayang mag-obtain ng information? So, kung babalikan natin kanina dito, no, sa data na to, okay, so we have, um, let's say, user 1 includes data about letter A, no? So, what will happen, data about letter A, is unaccessible to user 2 or 3. Tama ba? Kasi walang letter A doon. Now, the problem here is, although nag exist yung data kay user 1, okay, and also, they don't have any um, data, kailangan ni user 2 and 3 yung files na yun, ang problem dati is that there is a culture in this particular environment na hindi nag interact itong si user 1, 2, at 3. So, the problem is that uh, user 2 and 3 will not be able to obtain yung data ni letter, data letter A, okay, coming from user 1. Dahil walang interaction. That's, that's the structure before, okay? So, kanya-kanya sila in the flat file data management. But, okay, to address itong mga issue na to, okay, so dyan na buo ngayon yung database concept natin or the database approach that as you can see here in this illustration okay so meron tayong various users okay same three users kanina in the flat file management we have different programs if it is needed then these programs will be integrated to the ma database management system natin and the database management system will have only one storage okay we're in all of the data in uh, user 1, 2, or 3 uh, in the flat file system will only be included in one database. So that if one user needs the data, then it could be able to view that data also considering then yung access control natin. Okay, so na-avoid yung data redundancy kasi iisa na lang yung file or iisa na lang yung um, database natin, di ba? Wala nang BBB dito. Isang B na lang na pwedeng kunin ng 
either of these users and also yung to address kanina na yung problema natin about a data na letter A na hindi kaya access ni user 2 and 3 so ma-address na rin dito kasi they could be able also to extract the data okay about letter A but also considering some um, controls na lang okay so any questions so far so yan yung um, dating ngayon ng database concept or approach natin so it reduces eventually yung ating what data redundancy. So, dito tayo halos focus sa database concept or the database management system. Okay. So, ano ba yung naging advantages ng database approach natin when we compare it with the plat file system? Okay. One would be data sharing is centralized, no? Which resolves the following plat file problem. Number one, wala nang data redundancy as mentioned to you a while ago because there is only one storage eliminating the data redundancy as well as yung problem natin kanina na storage cost okay, will also be reduced. Another would be there is a single update. Diba sa plat file system, ang problema natin is there is an individual update. Dito sa database approach, one update okay, or single update okay, will happen so that it could be able to update the data in the database which reduces yung time to update at saka yung cost of updating the program or even the data. Okay, especially dun sa database current natin. Yung kanina, di ba, currency problems natin, di ba? The currency of information. Yun yung problema sa flat file kanina. Also, ayan, current values. So, it will be uh, updated as well. And, Kanina, ang problem natin is meron tayong task dependency, task data dependency. Ngayon, using the database approach, we will have task data independence. Wherein, as user of information needs to expand their data, no, the new needs can be easily satisfied compared with the plat file approach. Kasi, they can extract already the data from the database, okay, just considering some controls. Alright? So, any question about this data approach or database approach natin? Okay, wala naman po. Alright? However, there are also some disadvantages. Although na-address natin yung uh, regarding sa flat file, there are some disadvantages naman about database approach. So, one of the disadvantage would be, okay, it can be costly to implement. Kasi you will have to incur sometimes research o kaya bibili ka ng database management program mo, okay, sabi dito, so that you could be able to implement yung database approach natin. Okay? So, additional cost. Although, kung titignan nyo naman, yung additional cost na may incur mo in the database management will be, of course, beneficial pa rin compared doon sa cost na may incur mo pag, pag plat file. Alright? Another would be, can, it can only run in a certain operating environments. So, eventually, when you purchase a database management system, it should fit kung ano man yung operating system or system configuration that you have in your entity. So, hindi pwedeng, let's say for example, ang gagamitin mo is database access, okay, which is a basic uh, office, um, Microsoft Office na, na database no, na pwede mong gamitin. So, pero pag hindi gumana yun doon, then ibig sabihin you need also to acquire additional uh, operating system just to fit it. O kaya naman, bibili ka ng database management system na magpifit sa inyong system. Okay, kasi kailangan mag-work together yung system mo, operating system mo, as well as your database management system. Okay, because it is so different from the file-oriented approach, the database approach also requires training for users, maybe for inertia or kaya naman resistance. So typically, again, from the old, the legacy system, okay, so transferring to a database management approach, okay, so it will require you training. Lahat naman actually, um, kahit ano pa yan, pagbabago ng any system, it requires training. Okay, but again, this disadvantages at outweighs yung ating advantages, uh, sorry, the, the advantages kanina outweighs the disadvantages, okay, which gives us that the database management approach is better pa rin than the plat file system. Okay, any question? 
So, ay, naiintindihan ha. Sabihin niyo kung mabilis. Just send a message to me. Okay? Para ma mabagalan ko pa. Okay? Sa mga susunod na chapters, of course. Hindi ngayon. Okay? So, kung pagod ka man, sakali, tayo ka muna. Then, uh, roam around the house. No? Okay, post mo tong video na to. Maglinis ka muna. Tapos, balikan mo kung hindi ka na uh, bored. <laughs> okay? So, let's continue. So, there are internal controls in the database management system. Okay? So, the database management system stands between the users and the database per se. So, thus, commercial database management systems such as yung database access o kaya naman yung Oracle actually consists of a database plus, okay, so, once you have a database management system, it will also be having an additional software to manage the database, which is uh, usually controlling access, okay, and also some internal control related concerns, and also a software that would generate reports, which also creates data entries and forms, okay? So, kumbaga, um, eventually, when you buy commercial database management system, dapat isang complete package yan, including the controls, no, the access per se, okay, and also the um, software that would generate a report. Si Oracle, kayang-kaya yun. Diba? And even si database access naman, mami, I can show you one on a database access, no. Pero hindi siya masyadong gumagana kasi it's an old uh, system na nagawa na. Okay, although I can show you that. Okay, and also the database management system has a special software to control which data elements may be um, authorized by the system for a particular user. Di ba kanina importante doon sa ating illustration na there is also a control. Kasi yung database nga natin, it contains all the data already. Hindi naman pwedeng lahat may access doon. Then we need to provide also compensating control so that limited lang yung maging access doon sa particular information or data na yun. Okay. So, let's talk about, uh, sorry, before we proceed, let's talk about the elements of a database environment. So, in this particular illustration, it shows to us yung mga elements ng database environment. So, although in the next slides, no, uh, some of it will be discussed. So, unang element na makikita mo dito, which is very important, is the user. No? So, the user is the one who access the database. And it can access the database in two ways. Number one is through the use of the user application programs that system professionals have already prepared. Okay? So, mayroon siyang application programs. Ito, no? Application user program. Or, okay, the other way how this particular user could be able to access that is that um, it's a via uh, query. So, ito naman, user query, no? wherein it requires no formal user program. So, kung mag-query ka, hindi mo kailangan gamitin yung user program or application program natin. Okay? It could be able to access the database management. Pero if you have a user program, then same, no? it could be able to access as well the database management system. So, that's one important element of the database environment. Okay, naiintindihan po ba ako, guys? Alright. So, the next, about the, uh, the next element about the database environment is talking about the database management system itself, which is, consists of um, various features na i-discuss natin sa next slide. Okay, so daanan ko muna yung mga part ng database environment natin. Okay, so um, element pa dito sa database environment would be the database administrator who manages the database management system. Okay po ba tayo doon? So as you can see, meron tayong uh, physical database which is also an element in the database environment. And uh, this consists now yung ating elements. So, we have the users, we have the application programs, okay? Uh, sorry, 
We have the users which can use the query or kaya naman application user programs. Okay, we have also the database management system. Uh, another element is the database administrator at saka yung physical database natin. Okay, so let's talk about some of the features on the next slide. Okay, about the database management system natin. Diba? As part of the database management natin, there are three features that was being introduced to you doon sa ating pictures. Eventually, um, we have number one, actually apat pala yung feature natin. We have number one, program development, which is the user-created pro uh, application. Okay. Another div, uh, database management feature is yung backup and recovery. So, ito pala yung wala doon sa illustration kanina. Sorry about that. So, itong backup or recovery, it's all about the copies of the databases. Di ba? Importante kasi yung um, backup system natin. We have also the database usage reporting, which captures the statistics uh, on database usage, when and who. And then finally, yung database access, which authorizes the access to sections of a particular database. Okay, so these are the features being included on the database management system. Features pa lang yan, ha? Okay, and also, as you can see, um, kanina in the illustration, you have the user program which makes the presence of the database management transparent doon sa mga users. And there is a direct query, okay, yung query kanina by the user, which allows authorized users to access the data without any programming. Okay. So, okay tayo din sa features guys. So, uh, dito sa ating illustration na to, okay, uh, that feature was under this uh, content no, of the database management system. Right now, on the next um, slides, no, after the feature, we are about to discuss this three naman. The data definition language, the data manipulation language, at saka yung query language natin. Okay, so pumunta tayo dun sa una. The data definition language or DDL natin. Okay. Ano ba yung use nitong uh, data definition language na to? This is eventually a programming language which is used okay, to define yung database natin. Okay? It identifies the names as well as the relationship of all the data elements, yung records and files that constitutes the database. Okay, so the data definition language defines the database on three um, viewing levels. So, meron tayong internal view, okay, which is the physical arrangement of record. We have also the conceptual view, which is the schema representation of the database. And also, we have the user view, which is the schema naman, which gives sub the schema, which is the portion of the database on each of the user views natin. Okay? Are, are we clear on that? Okay. So, ano ba yung ginagawa ng um, internal view? Discuss lang natin tong isa-isa, uh, yung viewing levels na to. So, yung internal view na yan, as mentioned a while ago, it is the physical arrangement of records. So, ang ginagawa nito is that um, this particular view describes the structures of the record linkages between them at saka yung physical arrangement at saka sequence ng file. There is only one internal view in the database. Okay? So, again, it allows um, the particular user to describe the structure of the record, the linkages between them, at saka yung physical arrangement. Sa conceptual view naman, okay, this view allows the user's program to call for the data without knowing or needing to specify how data are arranged. Kanina sa internal view, focus nun is more on the arrangement. Samantalang sa conceptual view, okay, it does not usually uh, call for the arrangement of data. Okay? Tapos, there is only one conceptual view in the database. And finally, now you have also the user view naman or the subschema which defines how particular user sees the portion of the database that he or she is authorized to access. 
So to the user, itong user view na to is the database itself. Unlike the internal or conceptual view, many distinct user views exists. Okay? So that's how the data definition language works. Okay? So any question? Yung viewing na yan. Okay. Another uh, content of the database management system is also the data manipulation language. So the data manipulation language is a proprietary programming language that a particular database management system uses to retrieve, process, and store the data. Okay? To or from the database. So this entire user programs may be written in the data manipulation language or alternatively selected database management commands which can be inserted into different programs such as yung COBOL o kaya naman FORTRAN. So these are again another um, universal languages. And also this can be used to patch the third-party application to the database management system. Okay, by replacing uh, the particular old data manipulation language commands with the new commands, user programs can be modified to function in a new environment. Okay, so anong pinagkaiba ng data manipulation ulit? Ang data manipulation is a proprietary programming language which is used to retrieve, process, or store the information. Samantalang yung data definition language is the programming language to define the database yung relationship ng elements at saka ng records and even file. Okay. So, last language would be the query language. Okay? Hindi naman to English class, di ba? <laughs> it's more on a technical IT term for the languages used for the database system, but we need to discuss this. So, the query language, okay, has the capability to permit the end user and professional programmers to access data in the database without the need of conventional programs. So it can be no, internal control issues since users may be making an end run around the controls built in the conventional program. So the IBM structured query language or SQL na tinatawag eventually pagdating ng um, pagdating natin ng uh, last meeting natin, I will be showing you an example of an SQL that I have used in our company before. But typically, itong SQL na to is a fourth generation language that has emerged as a standard lang, uh, query language. So, it uh, it is used for all relational databases. Okay. So, bago ko mag-proceed guys no, on the next discussion about uh, database administrator, let me just show you an example of a database um, management system. Okay, so this is just a, 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 prob, a, a project of one of my students previously. Okay, na ginamit din sa subject na database management kasi wala na kayong subject na database management system. Eh. Before we have uh, a separate subject na yun. We have the computer, the uh, na basic subject ng computer. We have also the database management system at saka yung systems analysis and design. Ngayon, nawala na yung mga yun. But this is an example. Kanina, di ba, meron tayong pinakita about query. Okay? Query language. So, ito eventually, ito yung mga queries na binabanggit kanina. So, this is the language which permits end users to professional programmers to access the data. Eventually, ang purpose nitong query na to, okay, is to run, okay, a particular information that we could be able to see yung output. Okay? So, dito, extract yung about sa pay. Okay? Nandito yung reports. Makikita mo yan. Okay? Sample lang naman to. This is not an actual system. No? Gina ginawa itong program na to for um, the subject database management system. Oops! It's not responding. Okay? Kasi old file na to eh. Okay? But eventually, nakita nyo dun sa screen kanina, di ba? It shows us some of the queries Okay, the query languages being used in this system. Itong naka-flash sa screen, 
Okay, I'm sorry about it. So yung naka-flash sa screen, this is actually a form, no? On the database. Oh. What's happening? Wait lang ha, i-post ko lang saglit. Ayan. I will just show you, this is an example. By the way, itong pinapakita ko sa inyo is the database or the access ng Microsoft. Okay, so this is um, a created um, database management system through the use of the database access ng Microsoft. Pero eventually, di ba, kung, kung kailangan mo talaga ng high-powered system, you need to have yung um, commercial database management system. Okay, kasi limited lang yung capacity nito. Okay, so ito, ito yung example report na makukuha natin out of the queries, the query languages. Mapapansin mo, sa query, meron dun computation and taxes and work. Okay. So, ito, ito yung mga forms natin. Iba-iba yung forms. Uh, kanina, nabanggit natin yung mga views, no? Okay? So, this eventually are some of the user views. Okay? And also, meron din tayong, ano ba yung mga views natin kanina? So, you have the internal view. Okay? Ayan. So, eventually, design view is all about eto ang pwede lang mag-access nitong design view na to is also, uh, of course kung sino man yung uh, merong handle nitong uh, database access na to okay at kagaya nito this is also an internal view itong design view na to also about the layout no pwedeng internal view rin ito ito no we can edit it okay ay okay edit siya okay and also another view natin is yung report view so, ito yung report view. Ito na yung de-edited, editable kasi nga. So, output na report, ito na yon Okay. And also, we have print, uh, pre print preview. Of course, the report na yun. Hindi na siya kasama dun sa views natin. But you can integrate this database management also to the Excel at saka sa mga various um, uh, Microsoft applications pa. Okay. So, ayan. Hmm. Some of you might be familiar to it, no? Pero, ayan, ito, query wizard, about the queries. So, kanina, we talk about the queries. So, dito may mga queries na ganyan. Okay, ito, may mga queries being created. Okay, sa system, about the tables. Okay, we just close it. So, kung gusto mo naman makita yung pinaka uh, ginagawa, ito. Ayan. So, ito yung mga, mga tables na ginagamit doon sa report na mismo. Ano pa ang gusto ko mapakita dito? Ayan. It also uses Pro. Wala, ayaw na. Ano ba hindi ko nakita? Yung forms, napakita ko na sa inyo yung tables about the query, ito yung query 1. Ayan, no? So, these are the forms. So, eventually, what I am just trying to show you is that um, through the use of uh, a database access, ito, nabanggit ko siya kanina, di ba? The... Okay. Anyways, never mind. So, we could be able to really um, create no, a faster view. Kasi kagaya nito, uh, if ever na ito na talaga yung final database view. Ito kasi, itong part na to, this is eventually an internal view sa lahat ng to. Kasi we could be able to edit. Ang makikita na lang ng user is eventually kung ano yung forms na dapat makita. Okay, kagaya nito. Okay? Pero hindi mo makikita yung mga editable forms na to. Kasi itong part na to, yung query and tables na yan, they are all editable wherein this, this is considered as an internal view that could be edited. Bye? Okay? Ito na. Transition na natin. Sino pa di mag-edit nun? Or kaya mag-maintain nun? Okay? It would be the database administrator. Okay. So, any question muna so far, guys? Before I proceed? Wala naman po. Alright. So, balik ko lang yung slide. Okay, so 
let's proceed with the other element of a database management system, which is si database administrator. So, si database administrator is a person who, okay, has the position that does not exist in a flat file environment. So, walang database administrator sa flat file environment kasi wala nga naman tayong database management system doon. So, this database administrator is responsible for managing the data resources natin, okay? And also, one function of it is more on the database planning, okay? So, siya yung nagde-develop ng organizations uh, database strategy, define the database environment, define the data requirement, at saka develop yung data dictionary, okay? So, another also na responsibility niya is to what? Create the design, yung mga schemas, yung mga views na pinakita natin kanina sa inyo, okay? And also, he is the one who will implement what is being planned, tapos siya yung um, nagme-maintain ng ating database and also it talks about the changes and growth about our database management. So, wait lang ha. Okay? So, any question about the database administrator? Okay, so let's continue. So, let's proceed now with database conceptual models. Okay. So, this conceptual models refers to a particular method being used to organize our records in a database. It is also known as the logical data structures. So, the objective of this conceptual models is to develop the database efficiently so that the data can be accessed quickly and easily. So, we have three main models. We have the hierarchical, which is the trace structure. We have also the network and relational um, database model. So, most existing databases are relational. Some of the legacy systems or the flat file systems uses hierarchical or network databases. So, unahin natin sa discussion about database uh, conceptual models yung ating relational um, database model. So, a relational uh, model portrays data in forms of two-dimension tables. Okay? It strengthens the ease with which tables may be linked from one another. So, which is the major weaknesses na hierarchical and network databases. So, this relational model is based on the relational algebra functions of restrict, project, or join. Okay? So, ito yung uh, relational algebra functions that is, you can see, restrict, Okay, project or join. Okay, so this building blocks being shown, being showed uh, in the screen are used later, okay, in designing a small database from a scratch. So it talks about relationship of one data. Dito sa baba, di ba, you have join. As you can see, there is a relationship between uh, the data, okay, from one table to another table. So, as part of the relational database, we have associations and cardinalities. Okay? So, when we talk about associations, so it is uh, the representation by a line connecting two entities. Okay? And also, it describes the verb such as ships, requests, o kaya naman receive. Okay? And then, when we talk about cardinality, this is a degree of association between two entities. Okay? So, the number of possible occurrence in one table, okay, and also it use primary keys and foreign keys. So, if you have remembered associations and cardinality was being already introduced to you in chapter 1, okay, but let's try to um, have them again here. So, this is an example of an entity's association. Again, ang kaninang uh, definition natin ng association is that it is more on a line connecting two entities in a data model, okay? So, bali, ang entity association na yan is sorry. So, ito, di ba? 
this is eventually the line which represents the association. Okay, and it is association. The employee is assigned a car. Okay, a manager is provided by the laptop. Okay, so that's an entity's association. Um, bakit wala yung cardinality dito? Yung cardinality natin is more on yung one is to one, di ba? One is to many. So, ito, ano ba to? This is usually one is to one, di ba? Kasi one entity in association with another entity. Okay? Meron din tayong one. Okay, iba't iba yung cardinality is zero or one, one to one. Zero or many. O kaya naman, one is to many. Okay. So, ito pa lang example one na to. This shows us the one is to one. Okay. Ito. One is to one. Ito. Itong example number two is also one is to one. But this next would be one is to many. Bakit? Because of this line. Okay, one customer could have created various sales order. Okay, ito naman, vendor is also one is too many kasi one vendor could have, as, uh, could supply us with various inventories. And ito naman last is many to many. Although one entity, pero yung um, cardinality niya dito is naka many siya. Many vendors with many inventories. Okay. Ayan, so how to properly design relational uh, database tables? Okay, so each row in a table must be unique in at least one attribute. So ano ba yung attribute na yan na tinatawag natin? Pag sinabi nating attributes, these are the data elements that defines an entity. Kanina, yung diniscuss natin is an entity. Di ba? Yung yun nandito sa illustration. These are entities. Okay, tapos association yung naglilink sa kanilang dalawa. Okay, so the tables are linked by embedding the primary key into the related table as a foreign key. Okay, so the attribute values in any column must all be of the same class or type. Then each column in a given table must be uniquely named and then the tables must conform with the rules of normalization. Example, now we have the free from structural dependencies or anomalies. Mama, we discuss natin yung anomalies na yan. Okay, so these are um, how to properly design a relational table. Okay, speaking of anomalies, we have three types of anomalies. Okay. So, pag sinabi ba nating anomalies, anong ibig sabihin nun? Ano guys? Sa tingin ninyo, anong anomalies? When we talk about um, database, no? in terms of anomalies. So, these are negative operational symptoms of our database. Yun yung anomalies natin. So, usually it is caused by improperly normalized tables in a database management system. Okay? So, meron tayong three types of anomalies. One is the insertion anomaly. Okay? So, pag sinabi natin insertion anomaly, this is a new item that cannot be added to the table until at least one entity uses the particular attribute item. Okay? So, next would be deletion anomaly, okay, wherein if an attribute item used by only one entity is deleted, all the information about that attribute will be lost. So, ayun nga, kapag nagkaroon ng negative operational uh, deletion, then madidelete yung iba't ibang attributes, okay? And lastly, you have the update anomaly which is a modification on an attribute must be made in each row in which the attribute appears. Okay? So, anomalies can be corrected by creating additional relational tables.
yun yung yun yung mag-address doon sa negative operational symptoms natin na anomaly. Okay. So what are the advantages of using relational tables? So one it removes all types of the anomalies. Okay? So various items of interest are stored in separate tables as you can see naman kanina in the illustration of a relational um, through associations at saka cardinalities. Okay? So various items of interest are stored in separate tables. Then space is used efficiently. Okay? Then very flexible then yung relational tables because users can form ad hoc relationships. Okay? Again, uh, as needed relationship. Okay? Any questions so far? Alright? So, walang question. So, let's move forward. So, let's talk about the normalization process. So, in the previous slides, no, we have discussed about some database anomalies. Diba? Yung mga problems that negative operational symptoms or problems that have occurred. So, to address these anomalies, Okay, there is what is so-called normalization process wherein it involves identifying and removing some structural dependencies from the table under review. So, through the normalization process na a-address yung mga anomalies natin is usually uh, more on some dependencies. Okay? So, it is a process which systematically splits some unnormalized complex tables into smaller tables to meet two conditions. One, lahat ng secondary attributes in the tables are dependent on the primary key and also all non-key attributes are independent to uh, other non-key tables. Kasi di ba ang problema natin kanina sa insert, um, delete, at saka update anomalies natin is dahil related yung mga tables na yun, then most likely, we have a problem in updating, inserting, or even deleting. So, ayun nga, sineseparate na or in-split through the normalization process yung mga tables into smaller tables so that it could avoid some of the anomalies. So, when an unnormalized table kasi are being split, no, it reduces the third normal form. They must then be linked together by a foreign key. So, even though it was being broken down is into smaller tables, still, they are being linked to each other. Kasi yun nga yung purpose ng relational database, eh, but to link those uh, various table in uh, a particular uh, system. Okay, so here are the steps in the normalization process natin. Okay, so in the user view, no, you will have an unnormalized table. So ang gagawin, the table in the first normal form, you will remove the partial dependencies, tapos magkakaroon ng second normal form, then remove the transitive dependencies, and then you will have now the table in the third normal form. So, na-normalize yung mga tables natin. Okay? So, the accountants and the normalization. Okay? So, kanina, di ba, we have update anomalies which can generate conflicting and obsolete database values. Okay? since there is a problem about updating. Okay, in the insertion anomalies, it could result to unrecorded transactions and incomplete audit trails kasi nga we could not be able to insert yung particular information in the database. And also in the deletion anomalies, di ba kanina, ang deletion anomalies is that pag dinilit mo isa, madidilit lahat. Okay, so it could bring um, a loss of accounting record as well as some destruction of audit trails. So, accountants should understand the data normalization process and be able to determine whether a database is properly normalized. So, we need to understand uh, na kapag ganun yung nangyayari. And we need actually, in the actual practice naman, we do not do the data normalization because it's part of the work as well of a particular um, database administrator. So, we just report to them that we have experiencing these anomalies then so that they could be able to address it. Alright? Uh, Nag-gets natin yung, yung about sa anomalies and how it will be uh, addressed through the data normalization. Okay? Sige. So, uh, on the last part of the relational databases, so let's discuss lang in brief 
Ano yung six phases na ina-undergo in designing a relational database? Okay? Number one is identify yung mga entities. Kanina, di ba, yung mga entities natin is yung customer, yung vendors, yung inventory purchase. So, you need to identify the primary entity of the organization, then construct a data model of their relationship. Okay? So, nagets nyo kanina, di ba? Customer, ano yung kanina? Sales order. Okay, you have the vendor inventory. So, yun yung mga um, i-identify mo dapat na mga entities. Okay, marami pa yan. Example. Okay, so next, after you have identified the entities, you need to construct a data model which shows the entities association. Okay, determine the association between the entities and then model the association into an ER diagram. So, um, yung kanina, sa image natin, kung maalala ninyo, sa mga previous slide, diba, you, uh, the association is a line that connects one entity to another entity. So, you need to construct that. You need to determine ano ba yung association nila. At the same time, yung cardinality na rin. Then, you add the primary key and attribute. So, when adding a primary key or attribute, you need to assign a primary key to all of the entities in the model to uniquely identify some of the records and every attribute should appear in one or more user views natin. Normalize and add foreign keys. Kanina nabanggit na natin yung foreign keys, di ba? Ano nga ulit yung purpose ng isang foreign key natin, guys? Okay, baka banggit tayo ng banggit ng ng foreign key. Okay, walang question, saglit lang. Okay, so yung foreign key natin is eventually a key used to link two tables together. Okay, so yan yun. Then, next, or after you have normalized and added the foreign keys in the table, okay, is to construct yung physical database. So you will create the physical tables, then you will populate the tables with the data. Okay, and then you will prepare the user views, okay, which is normalize the table, which should support all the required views uh, of the system users and user views restrict the users uh, for having an access as an authorized data. Let me check, guys, if I can show you the relational database dun sa kaninang database na in example ko sa inyo. Ayan. So I just want to show you ito yung relationship. Okay, so this is actually a good example of a relational database. As you can see dito sa uh, part na to, uh, actually I've just clicked, ito yung kanina, di ba? Ito yung database natin. I've just clicked yung design, tapos, um, okay, let's say itong payslip. Okay, ito yung forms, di ba? I have just clicked the database tool, tapos gusto ko makita yung relationship. And dito yung mga dependencies natin. Okay, although ito yung relationship, okay, ayan. Makikita natin yung relationship that one table, ito yung table na dinidiscuss dun sa relational um, tables natin kanina. These are various tables. And they are interconnected with each other. Okay? So this table about the payroll transaction database master file, okay, is related to the time in or out summary. And also, it is also related to the employee database master file. Okay? So nakikita nyo ngayon that this relational databases, so important yung uh, relationship na dinidiscuss natin kanina in creating a database management. Eventually, ang kagandahan nitong database access na to is that it shows us both yung diniscuss natin about the database management system and also the relational, manage, uh, relational databases natin. Okay? So, I hope na nalinawan kayo. Ito yung example niya. Now, how to create this? Eventually, uh, yan na yung paggawa ng some queries, no? Yung paggawa nung itong system mismo, which is, we could not be able to discuss kasi yung isang subject na meron kami previously or before, okay, is just compressed in one chapter in this discussion. Okay? So, balik na tayo sa discussion, guys. So, walang question about the relational database. So, it prepares the user view. So, kanina, ito yung view natin about the tables. Tapos, it will again give us yung view about the, okay, forms. Ito yung user view na natin. Alright? So, 
the next part of our discussion is all about, again, although na-discuss na ito in chapter 1, about databases in a distributed environment. So in chapter 1, no, na-introduce na itong concept na ito, wherein it is an alternative to a centralized approach. Okay? So most of the modern organization use some forms of distributed processing and network to process their transactions. So in the data processing, okay, it is where we organize around several information processing units distributed throughout the organization. Okay, the information processing units are placed under the control of the end users. So under the distributed data processing, okay, it does not always mean na ito ay total decentralization kasi di ba we have later on centralized data processing. Okay? So it's not totally decentralized but the information processing units in the distributed data processing systems are still connected to one another, no? And they are coordinated. And typically it use centralized database at saka the database can be distributed which is similar to the data processing capability. So on the other hand, now we have the centralized database system and as mentioned kay Mina in a distributed data uh, processing environment wherein the data is retained in a central location. So yun lang naman yun. Kaya siya naging centralized. Now the remote information uh, processing unit sends the request for data. Then the central site services the needs of the remote information processing units, then actually the processing of the data was being performed at the remote. Okay, so eventually, um, using a decentralized, uh, decent distributed, pala, sorry, distributed um, data processing natin. Okay, it is an important consideration in planning. Okay to which it addresses the issues about the database can be centralized o kaya naman it can be distributed. So, partitioned at saka replicated yung mga database under a distributed data processing natin. Okay, so ano nga bang advantages nitong distributed data processing na to? So, it reduces the costs in the hardware and data entry tasks. Okay. And also, Another is it improves the cost responsibility. It also improves the user satisfaction since control is closer to the user level kasi distributed siya on the user's uh, part. Then the backup data can be improved through the use of multiple data storage sites. Some of the disadvantages that was also introduced previously is that you can have loss of control, mismanagement of resources, hardware and software could be incompatible, redundant tasks and data, consolidating some incompatible tasks, and difficulty in attracting qualified personnel. And also, you have a lack of standard when using a, distrib uh, a distributed data processing. Okay. So let's talk about data currency, okay, which is occurring in a distributed data database processing <coughs> sorry with the centralized database so during transaction processing so yung data natin will be temporarily be inconsistent as to the records once they are being read o kaya naman updated so doon kasi nagkakaroon ng tinatawag natin na database lockout so to achieve a data currency Simultaneous access of individual data elements by multiple sites needs to be prevented. So, ang solution para hindi po ma-access in multiple sites yung database element natin is to have database lockout wherein it is a procedure which is necessarily uh, to keep the information processing units from reading inconsistent data. Okay? So, it is actually a software control that prevents multiple simultaneous access to data. Kasi di ba, once there is a distribute, uh, distributed database at centralized yung 
uh, database within that particular environment. Okay, so pwedeng mag-access kung sino mang users doon ng sabay-sabay. But through database lockout, pag let's say for example, you are going to access, let's say, an information about um, a particular transaction. Let's say, about the transaction of accounts receivable, yung control account natin. So, pwedeng kapag nakita na yun, or kapag meron na una na user, user 1, for example, na-access na yun, and then user 2 wants also to check on that, no, hindi mo na uh, ipapaview kay user 2 yun hanggat hindi na sasara ni user 1 yung a particular na uh, information na yun. So, that's how database lockout works. So, there is also a concept of a partition database and a distributed database. No? So, itong partition at saka replicated na i-discuss natin mamaya, these are actually um, the distribution way in a distributed database. So, how does partition or partitioning works? So, the partition database approach splits the central database into segments or partitions that are distributed in the primary users. So the advantages of partitioning is that it stores data at a local site which increases users control. It also permits local access to data and reducing the volume of data being transmitted. It also partitioned no? the databases which can reduce the potential of disaster. So let's just show about the deadlock phenomenon. Okay, let me check kung meron pa. Ayan, mamaya replication. So let's talk about yung deadlock uh, phenomenon natin under the partitioning. Okay? So in a distributed environment, it is possible that multiple sites will lock out each other, thus preventing each from processing the transaction. Okay? So... This is a problem with actually partition databases na magle-lock out yung uh, each uh, other's multiple sites. So it occurs when multiple sites lock out, okay? One site needs data locked by another site. So special software is being needed to analyze and to resolve these conflicts. So the transactions may be terminated o kaya naman parted. So yan lang yung problema kapag partition, no? Uh, yung ating uh, database. So, this is an example of a deadlock condition. Okay? Wherein, okay, mayroon tayo, let's say, notice si site 1, okay, has a request of data letter A, okay, and B. Now, it is also waiting for the removal of, sorry, sabi dyan, it is waiting also for the data about letter C na manggagaling kay site 2. However, site 2 has locked on data C. No? Nilock na yung data C. So, hindi pa niya access ni site 1. Okay? And then, eventually, si site 3 naman, okay, inilock niya yung... Uh, data about letter E, pero kailangan siya ni site 2. So, ngayon, dahil, di ba, kaya nga deadlock condition yung nangyari, all of the data being needed by one um, partition to another, okay, was being locked. Okay? So, yan yung, yan yung problema natin kapag partition yung ating uh, database. Okay? Yung distributed database natin. So, what will be the resolution para dito sa deadlock na to? So, pwedeng yung resources natin currently invested in the transaction, okay? Also, the transaction stage of completion, okay, should be um, checked, no? So, the deadlock resolution software will avoid the termination of transactions that are close to completion, okay? So, kanina nga nabanggit natin that we need a special software to address this deadlock condition. So, another way how to um, distribute our distributed database information is replication. So, in replication, there is a duplication of the entire database for multiple 
uh, information processing units. Kanina, doon sa partitioning, one database partitioned into various sites. Okay? Ngayon naman, nire-replicate natin yung entire database that could be accessible to various information uh, processing units. Then, it is effective for situations with high degree of data sharing with no primary user. So, on data sharing, then you can use replication wherein support read-only queries. Diba? Meron tayo mga na na access na mga okay sorry uh, maybe in in the private practice no halimbawa kailangan ko ng financial report na ganito no uh, it could be accessible through sharepoint sa amin okay that we can see that particular data pero read only lang siya bakit this is to avoid any editing of the data once na preview siya ng various users kasi kanina di ba sabi natin it could be in a multiple um, information processing units that could be viewed yung database natin. The database traffic between sites is being reduced considerably kasi nga we are not waiting for some other to finish unlike doon sa ating uh, deadlock condition kanina na kailangan matapos mo na isang site when using it or ma-open man yun or ma-terminate man yun bago natin ma-process yung information compared with the replication. Okay. However, there are some concurrency problems and control issues in uh, the particular replicated database or kaya naman distributed database. So one would be, yung database concurrency is eventually the presence of complete and accurate data at all information processing units. So with replicated database, it maintains current data at all locations which is somehow difficult. No? Difficult para sa replicated yung uh, current data. Then, time stamping is used to serialize the transaction. So, it prevents and resolves conflicts created by updating the data. Okay, so as you can see in the previous discussions of how distributed data processing works, no? kapag in-update kasi ng isang user yung data, then it could affect all of the users, di ba? So, eventually, may time stamping na tinatawag so that they could be able to identify, okay, sino yung nag-update, ano yung update okay? And to address some, or even to prevent and resolve some of the issues in future updating. Okay, now, how does distributed databases works and where databases works for us accountant? So, the following database options impact the organization's ability to maintain our database integrity. So, preserve the audit trails, and to have accurate accounting records. So, eventually, uh, ano ba, centralized ba or distributed ba gagamitin ko? Uh, kapag distributed, replicated, or partition, if replicated, total or partial replication lang, if partition, what would be the allocation of data among the sites? So, eventually, ayan yung mga tanong na pwede natin i-consider kasi it would affect our audit trails. Okay, gaya nga nasabi ko kanina, example, Diba, sa distributed processing, na kung saan it could be accessible by various users, no? replicated, tapos pwedeng i-edit. Although read-only, minsan meron kasing mga hindi na-enable na -enable yung read-only, so pwede i-access na ibang users. So paano na yan? Diba, na-address naman siya ng time stamping. Okay, but we just want to avoid um, any future problems about distributed databases, so we need to preserve the audit trails kahit time stamping yan, at least makikita natin kung ano yung mga pagbabago na yun. Makikita natin, okay, si user A, binago niya tong ganito at ganitong time. At least we have the data about that. Okay? Eventually, um, in the discussion, mahaba-haba pa talaga, no actual discussion of the database management system, mahaba-haba pa talaga yung contents. So ngayon, um, what we really um, want in this particular discussion is really to grasp no, some sort of idea lang about the database management. But as you can see, no, we have the data creator, okay, database creator, and eventually, no, itong, okay, itong database, ito, this is just being created by a student, no, by, of, of course, um, having a step-by-step -step process, no. So, this could be 
a useful tool no kung halimbawa ganito nakikita mo no pang payroll ito kung sakali man that an organization could use or could not be able to buy yung ano yung payroll tool pwede kang magawa nito lalo na kung may alam ka in terms of computer eventually um in the private practice uh we have uh, two people so ako na din sa team ko kasi dati meron akong dalawang kasama doon na gumagawa ng at marunong about this database kasi nagpa-certify pa sila, may certification sila. So that they could be able to improve yung process namin. Eventually, no, how to make it is a long process pa no, na kailangan natin pag-aralan. But eventually, I hope na pagdating ninyo sa private practice, no, you will try to understand as well ano na yung uh, application nito. Kaya naman kung hindi man, of course, tatanungin kayo, lalo na sa automation, okay? So, halimbawa, instead na gagawin yung manual, o sige, i-run mo na lang yan sa query. Diba? Kagaya rin ng uh, SQE result ninyo, mga departmental ninyo, pwedeng, pwede natin i-run through database yun. Diba? I-input lang namin yung raw data, tapos mag-generate na siya ng score computed values na compared it with manually manipulating the Excel files. Okay? So, ayan. So, this actually ends the discussion of um, the database management system. I hope na may naintindihan naman kayo kayo pa paano dun sa discussion ko. And if you have questions, please feel free to ask. So, again, as part of our um, conclusion in this chapter, no, kindly answer the interactive question that you can found in this link. So, I hope na makopya nyo ulit siya ng tama. And eventually, please guys, do not share this link to others, lalo na sa mga hindi pa nag-review. Dapat nyo silang tulungan na, dapat natin silang turuan na dapat mag-view sila. No? Kahit magulo discussion ni Sir, <laughs> pakinggan nila. Eventually, you can read naman the discussion in the book. Okay, kasi hindi naman ako talaga expert in database management. No? I have just uh, shared to you what uh, I have. So, pasensya na kung meron mga parts na hindi nyo masyado naintindihan. But, uh, if you have again questions, please feel free to ask. So again, please um, check on this interactive questions, okay, and answer it. All right. So that's it. Now, thank you very much for listening about our database management system, and I hope that you will have a great day. So we are now down to our last three chapters. That long chapters na lang tapos na tayo, guys. So eventually, ayon nga, um, we have next. PowerPoint presentation or next chapter, the Rhea, uh, diba, naalala nyo, parang dinidiscuss lang natin yung nasa chapter 1. Nagsimula tayo sa plot file, nagsimula tayo, nagsumunod naman database management, then to address some of the issues in the database management, we have the relational database, tapos we will be going to Rhea, okay, the the resources entity, okay, ano yung A, nalimutan ko na, sa Rhea model, and then we will have the discussion of the ERP or the Enterprise Resource Planning in Chapter 11. And then finally, in Chapter 12, we will be, about, we will be discussing about e-commerce, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, so that's it. Thank you very much for listening. And have a great day.